Hello, this is Yaakov Fein, and today we talk about custom types in TypeScript. How to define a custom type. We'll talk about use the use of keyword type and uh, defining a custom type using the keyword class. Is these are not the only ways to do things because in TypeScript you can use the keyword type, you can use the keyword class, you can use the keyword interface and you can use enum for enumer enumeration. So we'll talk about all of them. So we are reading chapter two. We are continuing reading chapter two from the book and we are right there defining custom type. First one is using the type keyword. The type is often used for creating alias of the existing type or it actually can be used for creating a new type. In this particular case, we have uh, we want to measure uh, length and weight. In the United States, we use uh, feet and pounds, right? So instead of specifying using just a standard uh, primitive type number, we can create aliases, alias foot for a number and pound for a number. Then when we define a new type, like in a hospital, for example, they, use, they have patients, right? So we define a new uh, type using the keyword type, keyword type, and uh, we specify that the name has to be a string, but the height is measured in feet and weight is measured in pounds. So it, it gives you kind of a help, right? The program may be a little bit more readable. How do you, cre how do you create instances of the object if you, they have custom type? In this listing 12, I declare a variable patient of type patient, right? And which was defined right there in listing 11. And what do we have there? We have uh, name, initialized name, height, and weight. Uh, that's fine. Next, so by basically we were using what? We were using object literal notation to create an instance of the object. No constructor whose types important. Uh, what else? What else? If you, if you are, if you will forget to specify one of the properties, like in this case, weight, right? Uh, TypeScript will complain saying that you didn't specify it, right? For, for example, like over there, we didn't specify weight, and then you're going to have an error, error message. So what you can do, you can s use this question mark notation. If you use question mark after the property name you are saying that this uh, property is optional and you may not have it at all. Now this code that creates an instance of the object with only two properties will work fine. Now let's talk about uh, using the keyword type for defining type, not for simple uh, type aliases or uh, proper or new custom type, but for declaring a type that represents a function. In this particular case, I'm declaring a function, a new type actually, it's called validator fn. And what is uh, the value of this type? I'm specifying the signature, how the signature of the function may look like. So I create a type that represents a, a function signature. Uh, to be honest with you, I, uh, I was using, um, I decided to use this example because uh, I am using Angular framework, and in there uh, they have something called validators. When you create a form in an HTML form, you can assign validators to it. But validators uh, have to be function of a certain signature. So how would I uh, do this if I would need to define this signature using TypeScript? So in particular, validator function must take an object of type form control. It comes with Angular and uh, it may return either an object of this type or null, or null. This is how validators in Angular usually look. And over here is, there is something interesting, uh, this um, key string any, what does it mean? What, how, do you, how do you read this syntax? And in particular, this key string in square brackets. In general, as you know, in JavaScript, any object is uh, like a bag of uh, key value pairs, property value, property value, right? And uh, in pretty often you can access a value of the property in an object 
using these square brackets and then a name of the property that you want to access. In this particular case, it tells me that you can, uh, you can use these so-called index properties and it has to be either a string or easily convertible to string and the value of this property can be any object in this case. The fact that we have it in square brackets uh, also says that you can have one or more of these properties in the object. But what is important is that the type of this uh, object is any. Any is not a good, good example. And uh, let's, uh, let's try to see, let's try to see um, how, how we can use this kind of a signature. So let's say I want to, I will, I will pretend that I'm using JavaScript. JavaScript. So I want to create an object. Um, uh, and I initialize it with an empty object like this. And then I want to say object dot a is equal one to three. In JavaScript, it would be fine over here, right? I'm on the fly, I'm creating a property a on the fly. TypeScript complains that it doesn't exist. Even if I will use something like this, which is perfectly fine in JavaScript, TypeScript won't let me do this. It, it'll complain. It'll complain. Why it'll complain? Because I, am, I didn't define, I didn't allow the object to have these uh, index accessible properties, and uh, I didn't specify what type they may have. So how to fix this? I can say that the object is actually uh, is allowing index string. By the way, you don't have to use the keyword the word index. Uh, you can use anything that you like, and uh, it uh, it it allows to use uh, numbers. So what it doesn't like now index number element explicitly has any type because type cannot be used as an index type. Where is the type A? Uh, sorry, oh, sorry, I, the dot, dot is not, it shouldn't be there. Yeah, that's fine. See, now it's a different story. I said that I allow this variable OBJ, OBJ to be, to have properties which can be, which are index property and they can have a value of number. Let's try let me try to change it from number to a string. If I change it to a string, TypeScript will complain. Try, TypeScript will say, what are you doing? You're trying to assign a string, but it has to be a number. This one, right? Now, uh, you don't, this value doesn't have to be any, it doesn't have to be any primitive, but it, you can specify any, you can specify a particular structure of the object that you allow to store there. I am allowing to store, to, first of all, I'm allowing the object to have index properties and I allow to store there objects of this kind of structure, this kind of type. And um, uh, now again, it complains because one, two, three is not as, is assignable to type MSG string. So let's, let's fix that problem. I want to create an object which has a property MSG and the type is uh, hello, and the value of it is hello Mary. Hello Mary. Now it doesn't complain. I can create another property uh, that will say object B, hello John. See, I can have as more, more of these, not John, but John, more of these properties as long as uh, they uh, conform with the declared declared type all right now I also can if I wanted I want I could specify um, uh, numeric indexes right uh, numeric indexes but the right way to do this would be to specify number it works it doesn't complain uh, when I said object one because number is automatically converted to string without any issue so to string was applied over there Okay, then, then, actually, John should be spelled like this, even though it 
doesn't help in understanding of uh, the keyword type. Let's keep reading. Let's keep reading. So we're coming back to this validator functions that I defined uh, in uh, so you, there is a class form control. Once again, it's an example from Angular, but I will just explain you what it means. It means in this case, it means that um, it, this class has a constructor and it can have initial value of type string. You can define a, a form with a field. Field is a form control and you can assign initial value if you want to. And you can attach to this field a validator function. But validator function must have a signature of type validator fn. What is that? It's right there. We just define it, right? Or it may be no. So a field in the form doesn't have to have a um, validator, right? So in that case, it would be no. So what did we talk about so far? We discussed uh, the, how to use the keyword type. We discussed um, um, what is an index type uh, key and string, and that's that's pretty much it. I was planning to tell you about the about how to use classes as custom type, but you know what? Let's stop right there. So it's enough for lesson number seven. In the next lesson, we'll talk about classes and probably interfaces to define types. And thank you for watching.